Here is the abstract of this course. And this course examines a mathematical foundation of machine learning. And the first part presents by Kuchuri Sensei, uh, statistical learning theory, whose aim is to learn from numerical and continuous data. And the second part presents by me, and computation learning theory, uh, <coughs> whose uh, and is to run from discrete data, such as formal languages and the formula of first order logic. And both parts consist of fundamental theories and the methods to apply them in practical settings. Okay. <coughs> and the brief, the brief uh, contents of the first part is just like this. And uh, this part is taught by Kuchuri Sensei from April 16th to May 28th uh, for seven weeks. And uh, at first, uh, the first part is static learning on static learning theory. And uh, the first week, introduction to regression and classification theory and algorithms. And then uh, he provides a probabilistic framework of classification and static learning theory. Uh, this means uh, includes that Bapnik Cherubinsky theory, uh, pack learning, and the capacity measures. Okay, and the third uh, item is brief introduction to advanced topics, j just uh, like uh, sp support vector machines, kernel methods, and sparse regression. Okay, and the second. Part, the latter half is taught by me from June 4th to July 23rd. And this is uh, on computational learning theory. Okay. At first, I give some preliminaries on formal language theory and the computational formalization of learning. And then I introduce learning finite state automata and the context free grammar from positive and negative data. And the third I subject is to show the difficulty of the learning from positive only data. And then I show the learning patterns or monomials from positive only data and show the hierarchy of learnability. And the last uh, content is learning from finite set data with query. Okay. I we will explain later or more precisely. And this is very important point for you. And for the graduate school student on master course, students in master course are graded by exam examinations provided by both during the course and after the course. Okay. The examinations may be given in the form of take home uh, reports, in Japanese so-called report. And the students are expected to correctly understand the concept on statistical and computational machine learning. Okay. This is a requirement uh, by us. And uh, uh, today I don't have any uh, uh, print out, but so such a course material should, uh, and the text will be provided by uh, the CURASI system after student registration is completed. Uh, maybe the, it is very late, uh, the second week of May. So before that, <coughs> please visit the, our homepage. Our homepage address is here. Then you find today's slides and next week's slides. Is that okay? Any questions in particular on credit, marks, reports, examinations? Okay, you agree with me. Okay. <coughs> then, uh, Kuchuri Sensei introduces his part. Okay, so 
so I will just present my the, 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 the half course that I will uh, be giving in, in the next two weeks. So the first part, as Imam Sensei was mentioning, is about uh, statistical machine learning. So let me just give you a very brief introduction to some of the topics that we will address and what this course will be about for you. Um, the first introduction is probably about big data and what data can do and how we should handle data and why it might be useful for us. And behind those promises lies a lot of work and a lot of theories. And I will be explaining which uh, parts of that theory or of those ideas we'll be, we'll be studying. Um, I will give you then just uh, a very simple answer to this question. Will you have to program for the course? The answer, the answer will be yes. I will give you some advice. And then just the first assignment, uh, that you're, which is optional this time and which, which you, you, you can uh, choose to do or not. But it, it's going to be a very short assignment. So let me just give you a, a few illustrations of why machine learning is now so important in computer science and why it is a booming field, uh, both in academics and in the industry. Well, if you just think about it, uh, maybe in a few years, thanks to data, I mean, that's at least the promise that we have, we will be able to know whether people have to go to the hospital before they actually have a disease. And so this, this sounds a bit uh, science, like science fiction or a bit like, I mean, like a, a nightmare if you want, but it's, it's something that is increasingly possible and it was the subject of a, of a prize called the Heritage Health Prize, which incidentally just, uh, it's difficult to see with this low resolution, but this, this, uh, this was a competition that was just over five days ago, six days ago. And so the goal of the prize is to, to develop a predictive algorithm that can identify patients who will be admitted to the hospital within the next year using historical claims data. Meaning, if, you ha if we have your records of who you went to see and what doctor's visit you had, is it likely that you will go to the hospital and how long will you go there? That was the, the aim of this competition and that was what I think more than 1,600 teams across the world try to do. So from the very latest news that I hear, uh, this was not a complete success because the tasks seemed to be quite hard. They had to predict very well how long a patient would spend in the hospital, and that was a bit too difficult. But still, it's one of the, the promises. Another promise, and this is a very, very recent data set, which you can, you can consult online. So maybe uh, Yelp is not so famous here in, in, in Japan because they don't have a, a Japanese branch. But equivalents might be something like Tabelog or uh, I think uh, Gourmet.LiveDoor maybe. There's a few websites where people can just rank and give grades uh, to restaurants. So Yelp does the same thing not only with restaurants but it's also with a hairdresser. Or with a, so I went to California uh, two weeks ago. I had to find a, I need, need a haircut. And so I checked on Yelp whether there would be nice hair salons close to the place where I was staying at. And I found a nice person that gave me a nice haircut. So, so that's for you to judge. But, uh, so basically, the, this, this Yelp website centralizes a lot of opinions on restaurants. And Yelp has recently released data for a city, I think in Arizona, CS Phoenix, in the metropolitan area of Phoenix. And so there's over 12,000 businesses, probably f a few thousand uh, uh, checking, so basically they can check whether people have been going to the shops or not and relate this to the, to the reviews. So that's, that's another interesting data set. Another very interesting type of data now is uh, arising from uh, so-called uh, social lending websites. So you may know, you may have heard about Akushu in Japan. There's a few other uh, brands and, and websites that exist in the United States or in Europe. And probably one of the biggest is Lending Club. So it's very easy. How does Lending Club work? It's just a website which centralizes people that have money they want to loan and people that need loans. So for instance, the people that might want to loan money, I don't know, might be people who want to loan money to organize their wedding ceremony or to buy a swimming pool or more importantly to finance their studies, etc. 
people that have money to loan might be just people that have a few thousand dollars on their bank account and would like to have a more productive way of I mean, having interest on that. So this business was basically managed by banks up to now, but now it's managed by, by websites. I mean, it's increasingly managed by websites such as those, those here. And if you look at the, the total uh, loans which have been provided by Lending Club so far, that's above $1.5 billion. billion. So this is not a, a fad. It's really a, a big financial actor now. And what's really nice about this is that the data is almost freely available. All, not all of it, but a big chunk of it is freely available. So if you just go to the web page of Lending Club, you can download loan data. So what is exactly loan data? Well, it's a CSV file, a big CSV file, with a lot of information of who wants to loan money. And then you will have updates giving you, telling you whether the person has reimbursed the loan or not. So if you want to do a bit of data mining on that data set, you can find, predict, you can predict whether people will pay back their loans or not based on that information. So another famous example of how data sets can change our daily life was provided about three years ago by something called the Netflix Prize. I'm not sure all of you are familiar with Netflix, but right now Tsutaya is doing a very similar service in Japan where you can basically loan DVDs and they, they're sent to you by mail and you send them back by mail when you, once you've seen them. And in the process, usually, Staya or Netflix asks you to grade the movie. So if you've seen the movie, if you liked it, you will put four stars or five stars. If you didn't, then we will put one star. And what does Netflix or Tsutaya does do with that information? Well, they recommend you new movies that you can look. And so there is a big problem there, machine learning problem, which is given ratings for some movies by a user, how can we predict which movies this user will like? So in a matrix form, if you want, we have a very big matrix. So let's say we take a sample of 480,000 users and a sample of 18,000 movies. Most of that matrix is empty because, of course, most users haven't seen all of the movies. So maybe a user has seen 10 movies, 15 movies, 20 movies. But then when the user sees that movie, he fills in some information there. He puts a score between 1 and 5. So the problem now would be to predict those crosses here. Did that person, is that person likely to enjoy that movie? Okay. So what have all these problems in common? Which would have been impossible, I think, 10 years ago. Well, the thing is, all the problems that have been that I've mentioned here, for all these problems, the data is available. You can download it for free. It's there, and you can play with that data. So now, downloading it is probably the easiest part. Ten years ago, it was probably the hardest part. Collecting data was really, really costly, and you could only do the kind of research that I've been describing here if you were working in a very good performing company that, have very, that has a very nice data structure. Now it's just there for free. So we have to analyze it. Okay, so that's one of the big goals in the 21st century, and that's definitely the big goal of machine learning. So in the seven lectures that I will give, of course we will not be able to cover even 10% of the, the most important techniques in machine learning. But so there are other courses that will cover part of that. So I encourage you to check all the courses which, which mention these problems because I think they will be very important in your future professional careers. However, in the next seven lectures, we will focus on three things. So we will first present elementary tools because if you are not familiar already, already with regression or classification, then it's very difficult to do anything. You really need to have a very strong basis where you understand regression and classification. And then <clears throat> I will study something which I think is not taught in other courses, which is the mathematical foundations of statistical learning theory. So this will imply a bit more, some more advanced mathematical tools, and I will discuss them. But basically, we will try to raise issues such as what kind of model can you use or can you uh, define 
to handle tasks such as the movie uh, task. And then how can we address the problem of overfitting? So if you've heard about overfitting, you probably know what I mean. If you haven't, we will define it. And then in the last one or two lectures, I will uh, talk a bit more about advanced methods, uh, such as kernel methods, or, or talk also about sparsity. So what kind of mathematical tools will we use? Um, so we will adopt really a, a mathematical formalism based on probability statistics, linear algebra, and a bit, just a bit, a hint of optimization. But I, I think it will be most of the optimization ideas that we provide will be self-contained in the course, so you shouldn't worry too much. But we will use uh, just very basic concepts of probabilities, expectation, variance, inequalities, maybe some, 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 some uh, convergence, some bounds, uh, especially in the statistical learning part. Uh, linear algebra will be everywhere, so just, uh, well, I think you're all pretty knowledgeable in that. Uh, and then optimization. So about programming, as I was saying uh, in the introduction, uh, I will expect you to program, especially for the assignment. Uh, I think that's the only really valid way to understand how a machine learning algorithm works is by actually implementing it. So there will be very few questions, very few exercises uh, on which will require you to write an answer. Most of the, 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 the problems will be about programming an algorithm. <clears throat> and, and, within, and for that, I encourage you to use MATLAB because I think it's, it's a, probably the shortest way to implement a machine learning algorithm. Of course, you can also use R or Python, which are equally short. So MATLAB, R, and Python are, are very good candidates if you want to implement uh, things. I would not recommend using C or C++ or other compiled languages uh, for two reasons. First, it usually takes a bit longer. If, but if you are very, even if you're a very good C++ programmer, then it usually you don't have as many libraries or uh, pieces of code which are available in MATLAB, R, or Python for machine learning. So uh, people, researchers in the machine learning area are not usually very good programmers. We're just barely, I mean, okay programmers. So usually we stop at Python or, or R or, or MATLAB. So now let me just, for starters, just, just some food for, for thought. Very few ideas and the first assignment. So this slide is on my website. So please don't feel uh, that you have to write anything down. Just check my website and you will see all of this. So... Let's consider a function. So we'll go back to very basics of um, function approximation in mathematics. So this is a function which is this polynomial, x minus 1, fourth, etc., etc. And I just plotted it here between 0 and 4. Of course, if you give anyone this formula, then the person can very easily plot this function. This is like the, 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 most summary, the, the best summary of the function. Of course, you can see this function as a very detailed scatter plot with a lot of points. So it's a lot more time consuming to plot, to put those points here than having the formula, but sometimes this, this might be a way of looking at the function. And if I give you less and less points, one very simple question is, am I, am I able to reconstruct this blue line using just a few observations? So this, this is the, one of the basic ideas behind statistical machine learning which is usually we only see observations in nature. We only see people grading movies. We only see people going to the doctor, etc. But we never see the full function, the full blue curve. So what we would like to do is reconstruct this blue curve, which will help us decide things, using just a few observations. So in this very, very simple setting, it's actually very easy. Because we know that the function is a polynomial. Even if I give you actually only the red points, there is something called polynomial interpolation, which allows you to reconstruct a few candidates for the curve. And in particular, it allows you to reconstruct this yellow curve here, which fits perfectly those red points. Okay? So if you have the knowledge that the polynomial is a fourth degree polynomial, and you have a few red points, in most cases, you will be able to reconstruct perfectly the curve. If someone told you, though, that the curve was a cubic polynomial, you would not be able to reconstruct it perfectly, but you would be quite close. Okay? So you can see some of the, 
problems that arise, you should just send someone a few points and, and some partial information. So even if the points, I, in the previous case, I just put points evenly spaced. But you could imagine that the points are not evenly spaced, and you could still reconstruct everything perfectly. Sometimes in real life, however, we have access to not exactly the measurements of the function, but we have access to noisy measurements. So imagine that instead of giving you the location of the red points, someone actually gave you the location of those blue points. And you still have to reconstruct this blue function. So if you run again the same algorithms, well, you will see that it's quite different from what you had originally, right? So if you start adding up the fact that you only have partial information, that you only observe a few points, that there might be some noise, then using directly this fourth degree polynomial, even if you assume people gave you the, the correct information, will not necessarily be the best strategy there. Okay? So I just would like you to think a bit about this in this very simple setting where the function is just unidimensional, it's just one function of x between 0 and 4. And um, think about those questions. So to be more precise, here is the assignment, which you will be able to see in, 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 in the slide on my web page. And please send it to me by next Monday uh, before midnight by email. Uh, please put in your title, in the email title, assignment. Just write assignment somewhere in the title, and that'll be, that'll be fine. So those are the just the very basic questions. Look for definition of interpolation. Is, you can check the Wikipedia page. That's, 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 that's enough. And do what I just did with MATLAB using any function of your choice. And send me an email with the results. Choose a So I'm sorry, I just put MATLAB here, but it can be, of course, any data processing uh, language that you want. R, in particular, will do this very well. So you can choose a function. You can use even fancier functions, which are not polynomials. Actually, it's probably more fun. Plot it, scatter, plot a few points, and try to use the curve feeding tool. Interpolate and compare. And now think about what would happen if the function that I'm giving you is not just a function of x, but would be a function of a higher dimensional, uh, fun a multivariate function of more variables. So what might go wrong with this strategy in higher dimensions? So that's, that's pretty much that's it for, for my, my, my first half of the course. So I will meet you again next Monday. And then now Yaron Sensei will talk about his, his half. Okay. Yeah. Uh, sorry. I have to give the discourse. Okay, uh, I'll introduce uh, my part, the latter half of this course. And my uh, course is concerning on the computational learning. And uh, computational learning is, uh, original meaning of the computational learning is modeling learning in the same way as modern computation. And the, uh, if you are from the Department of Computer Science, maybe uh, you has already run, you have already run about what is a computation. However, uh, it is somewhat uh, a very philosophical uh, consideration. So in my part, I will explain, exp uh, explain in computational learning on the viewpoint of practical applications. And uh, the application is learning or knowledge discovery from discrete data. And what is discrete data? Uh, it is uh, strings, uh, IREX simulator, and uh, like text, DNA sequence, and, and so on. And the trees, like parsing trees on XML document. Or tables, so-called relational data, or graphs, and so on. And my, I will explain mainly on strings uh, and so uh, <coughs> my uh, subtitle is uh, <coughs> computation learning from string data. Okay. Uh, to <laughs> introduce, uh, to explain what is uh, uh, learning from uh, string data, 
uh, I explained the learning from uh, very simple learning mechanism from uh, numerical data or continuous data. Okay, <coughs> consider the uh, n dimension uh, of uh, space of real numbers and uh, assumes that uh, given two finite sets of data, C and D. C, uh, the each element of C is called a positive data and uh, each element of D is called a negative data. And uh, the task of the learning machine is to find the uh, linear <coughs> function which can distinguish these two sets, okay? Just like this here. So uh, consider that uh, these blue points uh, <coughs> represent the uh, elements in C and the, these red points uh, represent the uh, elements in D. Okay? <coughs> and uh, <coughs> so, and uh, in the uh, undergraduate course, maybe you have learned about a very simple uh, algorithm <coughs> which is based on the so-called generate and test in the terminology of artificial intelligence. This means that at first, <coughs> choose some uh, linear, uh, linear uh, uh, function, and it is not fit to the data. They devise the linear function according to the uh, errors. And uh, uh, in the finite uh, repetition of this uh, division, you can, uh, the learning machine, finds uh, a linear function just like this. This is a very simp a simple uh, learning algorithm. Then our problem is just like this. Please assume that we are treating strings or sequences of characters, okay? And then <coughs> we treat the problem of classifying <coughs> two finite sets of sequence, C and D. The setting is quite the same, but the only the difference is the data is not uh, numerical vectors, but it is a strings or characters. Uh, the string means that, for example, the set must uh, uh, consisting of AB, AAB, or AB, AAB, blah, blah, blah. And the uh, uh, set D is consisting of a, B, 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 A, B, B, A, above, okay? Then, how to classify these two sets? We can't use a linear equation because maybe all of you are unfamiliar with the mathematics of strings. Maybe uh, Kuturi sensei assumes a linear al algebra or statistics. It is a basic of uh, mathematics undergrad course. But uh, very few people, uh, students know about the mathematics of strings. Then, at first, we have to consider about the correspondence to the linear equation, linear form. Uh, before that, uh, I explain uh, why strings are treated in machine learning. The reason is very natural. For example, natural language sentence are strings. It's uh, consisting of uh, characters in alphabet. In this, uh, this is a very famous uh, paper written by Alan Turing, and this is also a uh, <coughs> this is an example of sequence consisting <coughs> of uh, alphabet. Okay. <coughs> also, uh, <coughs> strings are also used in uh, so-called bioinformatics. You know that uh, RNA or DNA can be represented with sequences. In, <coughs> in the case of RNA, just like this, uh, it is a sequence consisting of four characters, A, U, <coughs> A, C, U, G, okay? 
So <coughs> this uh, sequence, uh, sequence of strings are very familiar in biology now. And the more fundamentally, computers are working on strings. You know that every data in, com in the computer, in your computer, are strings consisting of zero and one. Okay? So <laughs> strings or sentences, uh, sequences are very uh, fundamental uh, data structure in computer science and machine learning. So <coughs> considering machine learning from strings data is uh, very uh, important in uh, the course of application. Okay? Then go back to the uh, linear separation problem. Then <coughs> In the case of treating strings, what is the correspondence to the linear e equation or linear function? And uh, the key point is that this linear <coughs> function, linear e equation, has a parameter which are vector w and c. And this e equation in this setting works as a machine, you know. That machine means that it is a mechanism to distinguish whether or not every data x is in C or not, okay? So <coughs> this is a machine. And more precisely, these parameters works as a program. If these parameters change, then the activity of this machine, <coughs> this in equation, changes according to the change of parameter. So this is why we call our <coughs> learning framework is computational. It is based on the computers, computation theory. Okay. <coughs> then, <coughs> for the case of treating strings, we should adopt machines which can distinguish whether or not every string X in C or not. And if you are from computer science, maybe you know at least one type of such a machine. Yeah, this is a finite state automata. And if you are not from uh, uh, computer science, uh, please uh, <coughs> don't uh, please relax because I will explain uh, uh, starting with uh, what is a uh, what is a finite state automaton and what is a finite uh, fi uh, finite state machine and so on. Okay. So this is a, a simple machine which can distinguish as data is in some sets or not. Then <coughs> we can uh, replace the part of in equation on the previous uh, algorithm with uh, the finite set automata M. This is a very simple uh, analog uh, analogy of the linear separation. It works very well. The difference is just this point. This <coughs> is if the, uh, the automata uh, is, does not accept Xn or something like that. This corresponds to the, uh, sorry, back, back. In equation here. <coughs> so, <coughs> in my lecture course, <coughs> In my lectures, uh, at first, which machines can be used for learning from uh, strings? Okay. And <coughs> for computer scientists, uh, it, it is very fam uh, fami uh, familiar with uh, <coughs> concept of the final state automata. And also, context-free grammar is a very appropriate choice 
of such a learning from uh, strings. And the context loop grammar also <coughs> works just like a machine. <coughs> and uh, the last one is very uh, rare case in such a context of machine learning, but it is very useful. It is an analogy of linear function, just like a string with variable. So consider, imagine that plus correspond to the concatenation of uh, string uh, uh, character and variable. Then <coughs> this is some, uh, some kind of function for strings. And the mathematics on such a type of function is very useful for <coughs> providing learning algorithm from string data. So I will explain in the, in maybe in July, how to use this uh, monomial in machine learning. So all these uh, <coughs> items are from the mathematics of string. And so <coughs> in, my in my part, we will start with the mathematics of string with introducing such a concept for the beginners, okay? Then next we have to, uh, we will explain uh, how strings are provided as data to the learning machine. And uh, the first case is a binary classification as I explained before. Both positive data and the negative data are provided to the machine and the machine uh, <coughs> identifies the uh, function in the form of finite state automata context grammar or pattern uh, monomials. This is very uh, somewhat e easy case, but more uh, difficult but um, interesting case is positive only data. Just provide the positive data only. The machine must characterize the data to find the regularity of the positive data. And uh, in recently, in such a uh, running is one class classification or something like that, <coughs> or characterization. And the last one is uh, very specific to the computational learning. And uh, the, in computational learning, uh, some learning machine are all to give a queries to the user. Normal learning machine is very passive, just accepting the training data only. However, uh, this type of queries can be provided to the learning machine to the user. And the learning machine uh, expects that the user answers. It is in C or not in C. So this is a very interesting uh, <coughs> framework in computation theory, in computation learning. And I will explain the last part of this, my top part. Okay, <coughs> then uh, next uh, we have to uh, explain that uh, if the current finite state auto automata does not accept fit to the data, does not do the fit to the data, uh, with which uh, alternative should be chosen for N? And this is a fundamental question for running machine because we, if uh, for the case of, in the case of linear separation, we can easily define the error by measuring the data and the lines, linear functions. But we don't have any such a good measure between finite state automata and the data. So we have to develop a new 
criteria or mechanism to find the alternative candidates. And I will explain the enumeration by Gader numbering and the Gader numbering from computational theory and the refinement of machines, which is from algebra. Okay? And at last, in what sense the learning algorithm is correct? We are we will explain in at last. <laughs> the identification is a limit criterion or polygon time identification with queries <coughs> are uh, introduced in my course. Okay. Okay, here is a reference of my course and, uh, and for Japanese beginners, uh, this book is the uh, best choice. Not best choice, only choice. Yeah. And uh, for for English speaking people, this book is the only choice. There's no other books on this uh, subject on computational theory from strings. <laughs> okay, so <coughs> it is very uh, particular uh, subject, but I. Explain because of the importance of the materials. Okay. <coughs> okay. Uh, this is my uh, explanation, my part. Okay. Uh, do you have any questions? It means you should do stand. Stand. Ah, uh, 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 please stand up. Uh, turn, uh, <coughs> Tan is a teaching assistant of this course, and uh, he will help yeah, us. For the assignments, uh, assignment. if you have questions, mm. you can ask us or ask Tan. Mm -hmm. If it's a practical question, you can probably ask Tan. Mm. And if it's a question of the course, please do not. And, uh, and Tan can speak Japanese very little. <laughs> 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 so the, uh, we'll, uh, we'll put Tan's uh, email address on my website next to uh, 